TNT's countdown to the Outer Limits week will continue. Monster Vision on TNT resurrects the Outer Limits. Go and give thought to the mysteries of the universe. The Outer Limits, one night, all night, one time, this Saturday, 8 Eastern on TNT. Welcome to the countdown. If you're going to live to see TNT's Outer Limits Night on Saturday, you've got to survive tonight's sci-fi flick. So whatever you do, don't panic! Don't hold TNT responsible for your nightmares. Monster Vision on TNT resurrects the series that asked, are monsters morally superior to humans? Your ignorance makes me ill and angry. The Outer Limits is back. Metaphysical discombobulation, existential distress, and cosmic nebulosity. Touch it, scrape it, do something. You're a doctor, do something. The Outer Limits, one night, all night, one time for all time. I must remember that. The Outer Limits night this Saturday, 8 Eastern on TNT. What scares William Shatner? Is it being trapped in a space capsule with a really ugly-looking creature coming at him? Is it being unable to control his own bodily functions and having to scream until he has no voice left? Is it being asked questions about a television series 30 years old that I don't remember? That's scary. It's scary because I don't remember. But, Bill, you must remember your Outer Limits episode. After all, it helped launch your science fiction career. You were an astronaut, a space traveler with a mission. It was to lead the way to, to new worlds, new life, new knowledge. Oh, the appeal of starring in groundbreaking science fiction television. And it's not so much uh, a matter of appeal, especially in those years. It was an appeal of the paycheck. Okay, so you got paid. But it was also the chance to get hands-on training in science fiction that made it worthwhile. Outer Limits uh, did not have a budget for any special effects as we know them. Uh, if I remember, I had webby hands, and that was as far as we went. Touch it, scrape it, do something. You're a doctor, do something. But even with a low budget, The Outer Limits garnished you a ton of fans. I would think Outer Limits was the basis upon which some of Star Trek was built. So, come on, admit it, Bill. Starring in The Outer Limits not only let you show great range as an actor, it opened a lot of doors for you on series TV. Where it fits in my career is another milestone, I'm sure. So watch William Shatner's Milestone episode when TNT salutes... Outer Limits, next on TNT. In a single contiguous lump of cosmic discombobulation, The Outer Limits, all night tonight. The next episode starts now. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. In 1963, this mysterious voice beckoned us to travel to the outer limits for the first time. What we found there were sights and sounds never before experienced on television. While the outer limits stories were literate and compelling, it was their special effects and gruesome monsters that kept Americans awake at night. <gasps> that may seem hard to believe today, but remember, 30 years ago, effects like this were on the cutting edge. There were no special effects as they're known now. No computer-controlled technology. We really, really improvised stuff like you wouldn't believe. With a shoestring budget and a scant six days to shoot each episode, the technical crew of The Outer Limits required energy and ingenuity. For example, this menacing monster floating in space is actually a simple puppet floating in water. We were just saying, oh, God, I'm glad that worked most of the time. We once had... Uh, some prehistoric fish that were coming out of the water to take over a South American dictatorship. The poor stuntmen, you'd see in the dailies, these fish jump up out of the water and zip down their middle and say, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. One of the show's most effective creations was this alien from Andromeda. Radiation! No! You'll burn us! We poured oil over a wetsuit with a strange mask. And when we reversed the negative, it glistened and glowed in reverse. The overall effect was completed by adding the sound of radiation energy made with a microphone and a vacuum cleaner. It was such an extensive makeup 
Fred Phillips, who did the ears for Dr. Spock on Star Trek, he devised a mask because I was in the same set as myself. Thank you for your kindness. And as Andro, the monster. And we had gloves that turned my hands into those gnarled fingers. And how did the cameraman film the climactic chase scene? He would lie on his back with the camera in his chest and would be pulled through the backlot forest. Uh, I still get mail when that uh, show shows to this day. Achieving the illusion of a man evolving over a million years required the Outer Limits' most elaborate prosthetic makeup job. Are you still not afraid of me? Its creator went on to win the first Academy Award in makeup for Planet of the Apes. However, the most ambitious monster suit ever attempted for TV came to life on September 30th, 1963. This creature was actually a stuntman walking on stilts and wearing a head mask four times the size of his own. Some stations found the alien so disturbing to young minds that they blacked out its face during the broadcast. Too disturbing? We'll let you decide when TNT salutes the Outer Limits. Next on TNT. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. On October 28, 1963, the mysterious control voice once again reached into our inner minds with a challenge to explore the outer limits. Where am I? What planet is this? It is called Earth. On this night, the sci-fi forces that be came into alignment for The Man Who Was Never Born. Starring screen and television veteran Martin Landau as the monster of the hour. I have got a telephone call from Joe Stefano, who is the producer of uh, The Outer Limits. And he said, there's a script on its way. I'd like you to look at it because I think you'll find the character very interesting. It's sort of like a Beauty and the Beast tale. The script arrived within the hour and I read it and I loved it. Scriptwriter Anthony Lawrence infused his futuristic monster tale with a romantic fable, making this episode both delicate and poetic. I can't love you. You must not love me. Why? Because there's no hope for us. Because we cannot change destiny. In this version of the classic tale, the beast must choose between sacrificing himself and his beauty or dooming the earth to a barren future. Instead of the glorious future all men envision, there's only a dark and empty road. I like the texture of the man who was ever born. I thought it was a very beautiful piece. Uh, and uh, thought-provoking as well. Tell me what you really are. Ugly. In many ways, The Outer Limits was a proving ground for young talents willing to take risks. The cinematographer was a fellow who's gone on to become a great cinematographer called Conrad Hall. And his operator has become one of the best cinematographers in the world, a fellow called Bill Fraker. To challenge the audience every week, they first had to challenge themselves by staying on the cutting edge of subject matter and special effects. With only six days to shoot an episode, this was no small task. Sometimes a pressure cook condition is very good because you, you know, you've got to go and you're working 12, 14, 16 hour days, but there's something going on. There's a vitality and energy and a sense of creativity. Out of this pressure cooker came some of the most groundbreaking and unforgettable television ever created. I like to see that sort of thing happen again. So I'm really saying, hey, pay attention. I mean, if you could do this 30 years ago, why can't you do it now? See The Man Who Was Never Born when TNT salutes The Outer Limits, next on TNT.